I'd like to acknowledge Australia's First Nation people as the traditional custodians of the land, and for this episode in particular, the Kabi Kabi people. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Read the label, see what the label says. You, you get so much valuable information of, of the labels, like when you look at the alcohol content, and, and then ask yourself, what, why is this wine got 13% and this wine has got 15%, you know? Let's ask yourself these questions and then come, come back to me and we'll talk about it. This is Over a Glass. I'm Shante Whale. Ramon van der Kerkhoff is a name and face you should be familiar with. He has been making wine dreams come true for over two decades in Europe and Australia. Today, he goes by the title of Head of Beverage at Sofitel Noosa Pacific Resort. Hi, Ramon. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Shante. How are you? I'm really well. I bet it's beautiful and sunny up there in Noosa. How's the day been? It is absolutely beautiful up here. It is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. The sun is shining. It is approximately 25 degrees. Sorry to rub that in, but I just had to do it. Well, you know, I kind of expected as much. And uh, if I was in your place, I'd do the exact same thing. But Ramon, take us back to the beginning. Where did your fascination of wine all begin? I, I think I've, I've always had good mentors when uh, when I started out in, in hospitality. Uh, I have a, a commerce background. I studied commerce. And then went into into hospitality as a um, as a side job there, and I've just grown to love hospitality, grown to love uh, you know the service side of it, the the people aspect of it, and always just stuck around and and really always had good mentors that were enthusiastic about wine. Well, that's always really nice. Ta- where exactly were you born? Uh, I was born in Eindhoven, so that is the uh, southern part of of Holland. And a lot of people know Eindhoven by the soccer club or football club, I should say, PSV Eindhoven, and uh, the 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 Philips Stadium, the the light the light bulb city. <laughs> Well, it's funny because you've got such a beautiful accent, but it definitely takes someone by surprise because I don't know if they can always completely pinpoint it. Now, most people of late would know you from Encore by Claire Smith, where you were part of the um, opening team of that incredible restaurant. But you are an not new to Australia and you've been working in Australia before. Let's go back to the start and tell me a little bit about how your career has unraveled. Well, uh, when I first got to Australia, that was 2005, January 2005 to be precise. And I moved here after a, a trip I did with the Dutch Guild of Sommelier. So the early 2000, 2002, uh, my memory is, is still correct. And I just fell in love with, with Australia. And I've always had this fascination with with this people, with this wine, and with the hospitality industry. And then uh, I was head sommelier at a three Michelin star restaurant in Rotterdam called Park Heuvel. And I did that for three years. And then in 2000 and sort of mid-2004, I decided, well, you know, let's let's pursue this this wine dream of, of making my own wine in Australia. And I signed up to the University of Adelaide to do a, a viticulture program. Oh, right. Okay. So that is that when you kind of started out working at Penfolds after that, or am I getting that out of the timeline? That is correct. That is correct. So starting off, one of the first restaurants I worked at was uh, Chloe's in Cantown, just on, on the parade near Norwood in Adelaide, which was an institution. And then a few a few other restaurants, you know, as as a little side gig while, while you're at uni, because you like you don't want to use uh, like lose your sommelier touch. And then I started uh, working for for Penfolds McGill Estate. Wow, well, that's a pretty impressive place to to be out of university. And then when did you head over to Rockpool? Well, Rockpool was that that actually came after Aria. So from from Penfolds, I moved in 2010. I moved to Sydney, and I worked at Aria with Matt Dunn from 2010, and then 2012. So I did that for a good. Two, two years and a bit, 2012, I moved to Rockpool Bar and Grill, where uh, Sophie Otten was the wine director at the time. Michael Engerman was the head sommelier, uh, a master sommelier there. And then myself and, and a few others, uh, titans of industry in the, in the sommelier world. You are 100% correct when you say titans. They are some of the biggest names and most influential uh, sommeliers that mm-hmm. have, have come through that place. What was your time like at Rockpool and what did you learn from Michael and, and Sophie? 
it, it was just amazing. And uh, till, t- up to this date, I, I still keep in contact with him. And whenever we see each other or run into each other, it, especially with Sophie when I'm in Sydney, it is like time uh, time has stood still. It, it is always good to have a chat again and, and to talk about uh, talk about life, talk about wine in, in that way. And they have just been so influential for me, and they I hold them very dear to my heart, both of them. Michael, I, I still text uh, now and again, so and it, it's it's just so nice to still be in touch and to still have that personal connection uh, with these beautiful people. That's awesome. And of course, you'd still see Matt Dunn uh, traipsing around the joint now that he's, you know, working for, for Joval and, and Plum. So you, you, you'd get to catch up with all your old buddies. I know, and it is it is just the best uh, to be able to talk and to, to reminisce about uh, about the old days, but but also what's happening nowadays. You know, it it is good to you know still be in touch and and to to still see what's going on in the industry and how we can help and improve what's uh, what's happening nowadays. You then decided to to head back to the Netherlands. Tell me a little bit about the kind of Netherlands hospitality scene and how it differs to what you've experienced in Australia. Um, it 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 didn't differ that much in in a way that you know still the the service aspect is 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 still high regarded. I, I moved back after uh, after Rockpool. Uh, to the Netherlands, and then I, I worked at, at Park Heuvel again in, in Rotterdam. This time it was under a different owner, but still with two Michelin stars. And I did my my wine master title there. And that wine master is a uh, is a Dutch title organized by the Hospitality College in, in the Netherlands, and you're only invited to to do the examination after a, a thorough debrief by the um, by the commission there so i did that and that was always always on my bucket list to, to get that added to my name and i was so proud of of that day and so i, I did that for two years then i moved uh, further south to uh, to where i was born to eindhoven and worked in a two Michelin star restaurant called the trace Vancouver. and I, i'm still in touch with them <laughs> to this single day Oh, that's wonderful. I, I'm glad that you pronounced that because on paper I wasn't even going to attempt to pronounce that restaurant. I thought, no, I, I can't I can't do that. But that's all right. I thought I, I thought I'd beat you to it. <laughs> Thank you for that. Tell me a little bit about um the master program over there and, and what what is involved in, in getting to that wonderful coveted title. It is it, it is sort of in, in a way a little bit similar to the uh, WZ diploma course and a, a combination of, of the uh, master sommelier course. It, it is first and foremost it is a, a hospitality um, award which has been given. So it is not just uh, being able to pour a wine and to do a good uh, wine food recommendation. It is it is a total picture how you run your wine program to the to the cogs to the storage of, of the wine and the use of glassware and how you actually run a whole server so it, it is is very much like a whole day encompassing i i remember they came in at, at 10 o'clock in the morning and they left at 1 30 at night and i was shattered at the end of the night i was so tired but it was a, a, one of the best days of my life Wow. I mean, I love these kind of programs that really are all encompassing of the job, not just what you're doing, you know, uh, once that six o'clock rolls around and you're in service, but all the, the work that goes into to the back of house. And like you said, how, how you facilitate, you know, all the numbers to get you to that end point. I really love programs that, that understand the, the job title in that way. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, yeah, it is, it is such an amazing day because often when you you do an exam, you, you're out of your natural habitat, and, and you sit there, and, and it's a little bit more artificial. And with this program, you're they're actually coming to the restaurant where you're working, so they're seeing how you perform day in day out, how you interact with your guests, how you do your wine service, how you train your team, and in in sort of in between lunch and dinner service, I did a masterclass on vintage Australian wine, and like the commission there. There were four other uh, wine masters there, and they were just in awe. They said, "Like, oh, like n- normally it would go for an hour. I think I did two and a half hours." And they said, "Oh, can we try some more?" So, well, you know, it has to end at some stage. <laughs> Gosh, that's amazing. I mean, what a wonderful way to kind of really see someone in action. Now, you you strike me as somebody that's incredibly confident. Now, were you nervous on the day? Were you shaking? 
Oh, absolutely. I did. Not, I did. Not, I think I left the night before. I was just like cleaning up the cellar and, and everything had to be perfect. You know, even to the to the door handle, I was polishing the door handle. And I, th I think it le I left at two o'clock at night. I, I, I think I had two hours of sleep and then and then back in to make sure everything was perfect. I'm a perfectionist at heart. Oh, I, d I, I can completely see that. But there needs to be some kind of Netflix series on that whole process because I would love to see a little bit more into how that commission happens. But it, it's wonderful to hear. Now that you've, you know, worked in lots of Michelin restaurants, you've worked at some of the best restaurants in Australia, how would you describe your kind of service style? If you could pick three words, how would you describe it? Um, engaging, sharing and communicative, I'd say. You, re you really mm. put me on the spot with just three words there. <laughs> I know, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> but I think that you've, you've hit the nail on the head with that because um, you are somebody that's very open with uh, how you speak about wine. Um, the joy comes across. And now I haven't had the luxury of being served by you yet, but when we, when we speak about wine together, I can really see your passion and your love for, for talking about it with people. Oh, that, that that is that is one hundred percent true, and like I, I have had the honor of of being served uh, by you, and I I can see we're, we're two peas in a pod. Like I am, I'm such a big champion of of what you do, and and everything, and like in all honesty, you're 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 one of my heroes as well. I thought it was just amazing how you did that, and I could really relate. And there 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 are few and far between. <laughs> That's very kind words. Talking about confidence, mm -hmm. when you came in prior to the opening of Encore with the team. And yeah, I definitely, there's definitely times that you go, you know, I do this every day, but you had such a good reputation. I definitely had some nerves on that night too, wanting things to just go perfect. So thank you for those kind of words. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was more than, was more than perfect. The honor was all ours. <laughs> Tell me about how you go about building a wine list. You know, you, you move to a new restaurant, um, you know, you always inherit, um, the seller. So how do you go about making your own imprint with a wine list um, using the stock you have? How do you go about, what's the step-by-step -step process? Well, it, that, that's always a, a really hard one because especially when it, when it's not your seller and sort of you're having to, pardon the pun, play with other people's money in, in that way. And like like another sommelier built that seller up and there was definitely a, a, a vision aligned with, with making that list. And then, you know, every sommelier that, that comes in and especially in, in, in big venues or big programs, for instance, like Rockpool there as well. You know, trying to make a mark on on that list is very hard. It's often easier with a with a smaller wine list. Probably best example was the Trace Vancouver in in Eindhoven, where they had a relatively small list, and I could really just very quickly also turn that into something. I would really enjoy and, and something, you know, all our sommeliers that, that we worked with at the time there enjoyed, but moreover, the guests would enjoy. For, for me, it's all about that, that guest experience. Wines have to match the kitchen there as well. It, it's no point if you have a really refined style of, of food and then you're putting big bombastic wines next to it. So everything has to be in line as well. Yeah, so important that you, you see what, what the offering is and what those wines are served beside I totally agree with you and and it is hard to make your mark like you said when you've when you've got you've got to work with what you have but I, I think that um you know your style and and what you love really comes across what do you love about Australia wine is there some regions that you champion at the moment well like for, for me I always say Adelaide's Adelaide's home as where well. that, that is the first sort of city that I that I settled in and you know I still have a lot of a lot of good friends there Somalia friends winemaker friends and I love going back to Adelaide going up to the Barossa still one of my favorite regions and probably the region I'm, I'm hoping I'm not stepping on any toes here that have made real strides in in moving forward and of, of course we, we still have the the glorious big classic Barossa Valley Shiraz but moving into sort of some um newer style wines and really more about refinement really showing character to the region really showing terroir and th that is it's just amazing yeah they have they have changed and i imagine with your kind of little gap of you disappearing back to europe and then coming back to australia were you 
pleasantly surprised by the changes that you saw in the Australian wine industry? Oh, one one hundred percent, and and especially sort of looking back at at Barossa Valley, where where champions like Fraser McKinley from Sammy Odie, Alex Head Head Wines, they they have just really sort of did the nail on the head with you know looking and classifying almost the region. Uh, again into you know different styles and and different terroirs and def- definitely surprised and and really in awe of, of what they have done yeah I, I agree with you you know Alex head and the way that he looks at, at sub regionality is is really done great things for the region and it's lovely to hear you talk about Adelaide in that way because it has had its mark on you you know with your first one of your first roles being at, at Penfold now you've made the move up to Noosa, which is surprising and fantastic, working with some amazing people at Noosa Beats House. Tell me a little bit about what the decision to to get out of the hustle and bustle of the city. Um, Well, it's, you know, as as I like, Sydney always has a special place in my heart. And and I must say, it's like, actually, even every time I go back to Sydney now, it's like, oh, did I make the right decision? And then I come back up here to the Sunshine Coast. I'm like, yes, I did. You know, it is it is such a nice, (laughs) nice way of life. It's a good pace here. It's it's lots of lower energy, but especially the people we work with, a a lot of, you know, captains of industry coming coming up here and having that same ethos of of great service great food and and great wine well, yeah well you, noosa knows what they're doing that's for sure i mean you're working with martin de boa who's an absolute hero of mine you've got an inc- a crazy experienced and well-rounded team at noosa beach house Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and it, it is a pleasure to work with them, like day in, day out, and to to sort of brainstorm what what we're doing next. And you know, like Noosa, Noosa is a is absolutely a holiday destination uh, for that. You still see a lot of uh, regular faces uh, we used to have at Encore and at Rockpool still coming up up to Noosa, and so Sydney and Melbourne guests are still coming up here, and it is great to talk with them, and and they're always surprised when they say like, oh, it's just like being in Sydney. I think that's a great compliment. And you, do you find that the clientele, like you said, are more relaxed? Are they drinking differently? I mean, they might be faces you see in, in Sydney, but are, are they requesting different beverages? It's 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 an odd one in, in that way, especially with the temperatures here. Uh, that there's a there's a lot more beer. So, uh, and I, I will admit, I've actually started drinking a lot more beer since I've been up here. There's some some great breweries, some great local breweries around here, and some great distilleries there as well. So I've been really tapping in uh, into those sources there. But a, a lot of white wine, sort of fresh rieslings, and and the lighter lighter styles of of Chardonnays. But it's 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 good to see, you know, when, when you get the Melbournians up, always Yarra Valley and and Mornington really shoot through the roof, and then you know when Sydney comes the the hunter valley semions tend to take a, a turn for the best so it's, yeah, it's 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 very interesting to see and it's like one day is very different to the next yeah that's always nice isn't it tell me about you know it has been uh, a bit of a challenging time in terms of staffing how are you how are you faring for for working with you know uh people that are serving wine or sommeliers up there uh, well, like we, it, it is, it, it's not just up here in Noosa. I, I think we, you know, when when you talk about the bigger city, even when when you go down to Brisbane or back in Sydney and and Melbourne, you know, I, I think we're all uh, since, since COVID sort of really slowly trying to get out of that uh, out of that dip and and get back into the saddle. There's a, there's a lot of sort of young uh, sort of pioneering individuals really wanted to to make their mark and and step up and and it's great to see them it's great to train them and they're like sponges they just absorb and they make you enthusiastic yourself by wanting to share what you know yeah i love that what what do you look for if you're going to hire someone to work in the wine team with you what are the kind of skill sets that you, you want them to have enthusiasm passion you know when i always ask them to talk about a, a particular wine that that they've enjoyed in in the last week or so and and get them to to chat a little bit about that and and see how how well they purvey that how enthusiastic they get when they're actually talking about it like all the other little things i can train but enthusiasm has to come from the heart I love that because I think that often when you ask such a simple question, tell me about a wine you've drunk recently and why you enjoyed it. A lot of the time, 
poor sommeliers when they're on 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 the line um, are freaking out, thinking about, do I know the technical details, and am I going to say something wrong? And it's not not any of the part that you're looking for, is it? Absolutely, like I I really c- could not give uh, or care less about you know about pHs and. And and give more about tenant structures and and the like. It, that that's irrelevant. It's it's about how you sort of shared that bottle of wine and and what 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 impression it, it made on onto you. That's what I want to know because that is that is what you pervade to guests as well. And talking about you know the type of uh, food offerings that you have up there, how do you go about kind of creating um, food and wine experiences in the restaurant? He's championing all these sort of uh, great tomatoes, Nusa Reds and the likes. And we're, we're working with the Falls, uh, which is a farm, just making absolutely fantastic produce. And it's, it's, it's a lot of that sharing uh, character we're doing at the table. So I always offer, you know, like tr- try a few different glasses, you know, split one glass over two just to get an impression of the wine or, or just have a nice bottle and, and see how it evolves over the meal. That's you know, that's what I would do normally. Yeah, and there is always, you know, a lot of room to play if you're going to have a glass or something. And I love that you said, you know, splitting a glass. There's always options, you know. It, it's nicer to be able to try different things rather than having, you know, not always to commit to just, you know, having one style of wine, isn't it? Absolutely. And and it's, it's often also a little bit of a health conscious move. A, a, lot, a lot of guests, like they don't want to, you know, end the evening on, on, on a heavy bottle of wine, or just one or two glasses. You know? and, and that's the great thing. We've got, we've got a beautiful Coravan program, uh, which, which we started and offering some, some really fantastic wines. And it's, it's just amazing that, you know, you, you see the excitement of people and say, oh, I never would have picked that. And, uh, and they, it's, it's, it's so great to be able to do that. Run me through because I don't think we've ever spoken on on the podcast about what the Coravan kind of program has done for for serving in a restaurant. Can you just give us a little brief insight into to the Coravan system? Well, with with Coravan, I think it's probably one of the greatest um, in, inventions in in the wine industry, and uh, you know, allowing uh, the the service of more more expensive wines or, or wines that are not. Not every day. We're, we're doing a fantastic uh, Pinot Blanc from from Adam uh, from Eldersley Wines, and it is it is just amazing. That, that wine, you know, it, it's it's often a hard sell because then people don't know what what either a Pinot Blanc is, or they're like, oh, they, they, they have a different uh, comprehension of Pinot Blanc. Doing it it by the glass now with, with the Coravan is is just amazing. And you know, usually the bottle doesn't even last a week, but at, at the end of the week, I sometimes think the wine looks even better than than it did when you when you poured the first glass. So it's it's an absolutely great invention. Mm. Yeah, I suppose that that ability to kind of withdraw the wine and let the argon gas kind of preserve it and and not let the the oxygen kind of taint it allows us to just open wines perhaps that, you know, because of cost, we wouldn't be able to do because like you said, it's a bit of a hand sell. And so it's just opened up so many um, avenues for being able to offer wine by the glass, isn't it? And carafes. Absolutely, and and same with the what the the new uh, addition to Coravan for the for the sparkling wines and and for champagne, you can do some great grower champagnes by the glass, and with the preservation system, you know, keeping the the CO two in the wine, it's it's just fantastic. It's the best invention ever since sliced bread, of course. <laughs> I tend to agree with you, but there was a little part of my heart that just died when I realized that I wasn't able to drink some of the flat champagne that was left over after a day. I was thinking, but I look forward to my flat champagne, you know, some of those beautiful champagnes like Krug, I would drink, you know, happily still in a Chardonnay glass and, and. Absolutely. <laughs> and I loved, I love that you said a Chardonnay glass, cause that's, that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> Perfect. We are like two peas in a pot. I love it. Absolutely. <laughs> Ramon, tell me a little bit about, you know, what you love about your job. What keeps you coming back day in, day out? It's, you know, it, it's guests. You know, I love the interaction with guests. And, and you see that, like, guests from all walks of life come in. We, we have the, the, 
the business tycoons coming in and 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 the family that that's that has saved up to come to Noosa and and just to sit in the bar. Even I, I love just going into the into our front bar, which is more of a casual uh, dining. You can you can come in for for a drink for a, for a nice cocktail, but you can also sit there have a few have a few little snacks, a nice bottle of sparkling, and you know watch the world go by on on Hastings Street. And it's it's so nice to just interact with those people and and see what brought them up to Noosa. Uh, and and the likes and that is yeah that that, that is still one of the things I, I come back for every day. That's nice to hear. I think you know the, being at Encore and having people you know at the top of that wonderful um, tower, and then now also being in Noosa, you've got guests that are in a pretty happy place most of the time, aren't you? And you're the one bringing them drinks, so they're only even more happy to see you. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I've never been at a table where, where somebody said I'm not happy to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's definitely a perk of the job. Mm -hmm. Is there a job that you have done over the years which you would love to skip out on if you could just get somebody else to do it? Is there a part of your job that you think, oh, I'd rather not do that bit? Oh, I, I, I think the word stock take come to mind, but I don't <laughs> think that's, that's just me. <laughs> no, I don't think that's just you. I think everybody looms the, the, the first of each month thinking, no, it's stock take time. <laughs> I know, but, but 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 then again, you know, in every time it's done, and you're like, oh, you, you've seen what's what's in the cellar again, and then sometimes, oh, I forgot I had this, and then you like, you get all enthusiastic again, and you, you're selling it, and then you can't get more. It's like, oh, okay, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and I do think that there's sometimes the the building blocks of of the foundations of, of learning labels and learning names and, and you know, connecting with your staff. When you're sitting on a, on a cold concrete floor wrapped up with beanies, you know, together, it often gets a bit delirious, but you, you end up connecting in a different way, don't you think? Absolutely, absolutely. And and I, I've always said, especially with, with young sommeliers, you know, when you're in the cellar, read the label, you know, don't just put the wines on on the shelves or, or or in their in their racks. Read the label. See what the label says. You you get so much valuable information of, of a label. It's like when you look at the alcohol content and and then ask yourself what why is this wine got thirteen percent and this wine has got fifteen percent. You know, mm. let's ask yourself these questions and then come come back to me and we'll talk about it. Yeah, that's so true. And 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 you're right. Sometimes. Um perhaps what's on the back label. Some of them are like these amazing, not just tasting notes, but details about what's in the wine. And some say absolutely nothing. And I definitely used that time to to try and pronounce wines correctly because my pronunciation is shocking. And I used to kind of use that moment to, to say to my head sommelier at the time, okay, let me practice this one. And, and then... <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And then, especially with French wines. And I've, I've worked with some, especially Australian sommeliers. And then after th three times trying to pronounce it, it's like, just show me the bottle. It's like, okay. <laughs> oh, very true. It's definitely a rite of passage. Well, what's next for Amon? What are you, what are you excited about? What's coming up for you? Um, well, like I'm, I'm, I'm like really enjoying what, what we're doing here. We're, we're in a good space at, at the Sofitel, uh, moving forward. We're, we're coming, th these are a little bit the quiet months, so we, we can get sort of sorted for the, for the busy period that's, you know, that's coming up in, in summer. We've got a few exciting wine dinners ahead with Dom Perignon, with, with Lewin Estate Ooh. and and the likes, and yeah, we're, we're just trying to, to to really focus on on what's happening in the summer. Really focus on on the restaurant, get it, getting the team up to up to the standard that we want to, and then it's yeah, it's it's an exciting time. I'm happy to be up in Noosa. I love that. I'm, I'm thrilled for you. I'm sad that it's a little bit further away from me, but to the wine gods out there that organize junkets, I would love to be going on a trip with Ramon sometime soon. So if we put that out in the world, maybe we can meet up in, uh, in one of the great wine regions of Australia sometime. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's, let's just make it happen, Shante. I think we'll have a great time. Let, let's, ex let's explore Granite Belt. Oh, I would love to do Granite Belt. That's it. That sounds wonderful. Now, Ramon, I'd love to know if you could only drink three beverages for the rest of your life, what are they going to be and why? Okay, well, uh, I always have a soft spot for champagne and every wine list that I've made has got an extensive uh, champagne list. Uh, my favorite champagne, I would drink Frédéric Savard L'Ouverture. That is probably the the mm. like it, it doesn't have to be Cristal or, or Dom Perignon though even a nice P two would do the trick but if I had to choose Frédéric Savard L'ouverture that's probably one of my favorite champagnes of all time 
a a Riesling, preferably from Germany, let's say Egon Müller Scherzhofberger. And mm. in, in Chardonnay, I would just do a tall puddle Chardonnay. Now they are, that's, I'm, I'm interested all whites, but I, I'm not surprised by the caliber of wines that you've just thrown at me. Well, the, look, look, it's, it's also a little bit, I'm looking outside, I see palm trees, I see sun, and I just envision whites. But, you know, that, that's sort of throw, throwing in a, a Shiraz from, uh, from Sammy Odie. As well, but you, know, you, you have to make choice. <laughs> you do, and you're right. It, it, it definitely comes down to the mood and, and what's happening in your life that, that, that dictates what you kind of feel like at the time. Ab- absolutely. There, there is no such thing as a favourite one. <laughs> That's very true. We're spoiled for choice. Ramon, it has been so lovely to hear from you. I love what you do. I'm thrilled about all the possibilities up there at Noosa. They're very lucky to have you, and uh, I've really enjoyed getting to know you and a little bit more about about your background because I knew you worked at all these amazing restaurants, but I didn't know the timeline of how they happened and I'm thrilled to hear a little bit more about it. Beautiful. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you as well and I think this whole Granite Bell date should just go ahead. I think so too. We have to. I'm going to send you an email. I'm going to sort that out. Thank you for your time, Ramon. It's been a pleasure. Cheers to you. Thank you so much, Shante. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. This is Over a Glass. I'm Shante Whale. Stay tuned for more stories from the world of wine and drinks. Listen in every Thursday on your podcast app. Follow us on Instagram at overaglasspod and contact us at overaglass at deepintheweeds.com.au.